According to brand new polling, Donald Trump is surging ahead of Kamala Harris. What is up, people of the internet? It is me, Real American, back again with a new video. And today, we have to talk about the 2024 presidential election because it appears that Donald Trump has regained the lead. Yeah, that's right. Despite what everyone was saying about the election, despite everyone claiming that Trump was down by 50 points, he was going to lose in a landslide, it was all over for him. Despite that, it seems like reality is starting to set in for some people as we have brand new polling, not from Fox News, not from Newsmax, not some far right pollster, from Quinnipiac. You know, one of the most Democrat leaning pollsters out there? Yeah. They have a brand new poll, and they found Trump plus one. That's not a misquote. That's not a typo. They found Trump was beating Harris by one point. For those that don't know, Quinnipiac has a long and consistent track record of dramatically overstating Democrats, and not just by one point. No, no. Since 2016, a Quinnipiac poll, on average, has overstated Democrat support by just under 6.5%. Yeah, not 1%, not 2%, 6.5%. That means if they had the same margin of error that they had back in 2020, back in 2016, if they had the same error in this poll, you're talking about Trump plus 7. Now, obviously, that's not going to happen. More than likely, th th there's not going to be a seven-point miss like that. It's not going to be Trump plus seven, Trump plus eight. That's not going to happen. But the fact is, this is coming from Quinnipiac, a Democrat-leaning pollster. And this is post-debate, by the way. 100% post-debate, and they found Trump with a one-point lead. Their prior poll, which was in late August, was Harris plus one. So it's clear this was a shift towards Trump. And you look at some of the demographics, yeah, some of it looks a little bit off, like the white vote only being Trump plus four, and by some miracle Trump winning the Hispanic vote. I can agree that, yeah, there's some parts of these cross tabs that are wonky, but these same people that say the cross tabs are bad, you cannot, you, you cannot use this poll. The, the same people are the same ones that say, oh yeah, Harris is actually winning the white vote by 15 points. If you question the cross tabs, you're coping. They're the same people that said that. Now, I'm not denying that some of these cross tabs look off. I'm not denying that one bit. But the fact is, this is the same sample that back in 2020 was claiming that Trump was down by five points with white voters. He was going to lose in a landslide. The same sample, the same pollster, is now showing Trump with a lead. That's a big deal, because it's not like it's Fox News or some far-right pollster like Trafalgar. It's Quinnipiac. Quinnipiac is a Democrat pollster, like I just demonstrated. The, the scorecard right here that we have on America First Insight, by the way, go check it out. Quinnipiac, on average, overstate Democrat support by roughly 6.5%. This is a big deal. And Quinnipiac wasn't the only pollster to drop a poll today. Look at this, CNN, they found a tied race in the registered voter poll. In their likely voter poll, yeah, it was Harris plus one, but the problem for Harris is a plus one is not enough. In the electoral college, she has to win by three to four points in the popular vote just to squeak out a victory in the electoral college. That's the one thing that, that a bunch of people, they're not understanding. A Harris plus one is not good enough. And just like Quinnipiac, CNN, or I should say SSRS, that's the actual pollster, they have a Democrat lean to them. Not as bad as Quinnipiac, but look at this. On average, they overstate Democrat support by roughly 5.8%. That means if the same error occurs in this poll, which I'm not saying it will occur, but okay, let's say it does. In that scenario, that would mean Trump's up by five points. Four to five points. And I'm not saying that's what's going to happen, but you have two pollsters in Quinnipiac and CNN that are finding the same thing. They are finding basically a tied race at best, which in the electoral college, a tied popular vote is a Trump win. Can people understand that? 
Trump losing the popular vote by one is not a defeat for him. In fact, that's a win. That's better than 2016. And that's assuming that these polls are 100% correct. I'm not saying there's going to be a seven-point miss again, but at some point it's like, okay, if CNN and Quinnipiac are finding Trump plus one, a tied race, Harris plus one, if that's what they're finding... How can you spin this as some some kind of good news for Harris? And you look at the cross tabs, you could tell which demographics are swinging the most towards Trump. It's Hispanics, African Americans, even younger voters. Hell, independents are basically tied. This same voter block back in 2020, they were like Biden plus 12 or 13 or something crazy like that. Which, just like the Quinnipiac poll, that's what they found. Trump is doing way better with minority voters, younger voters, independents. And it's not the exact same swings, but it's roughly in line with each other as to who is swinging where. Hispanics and African Americans, they're shifting towards Trump. All right? That's what's that's what they're finding. Just like the Quinnipiac poll. Younger voters, same deal. And even older voters, they're shifting towards Harris, which I still have questions about how much is that even real, but either way, the point is, these two polls are finding very similar numbers, not the same, obviously, but they're both finding Trump is doing very good right now, but by some miracle, it gets even worse for Democrats. Look at this. We have brand new early voting numbers from Virginia, which we've talked a lot about recently, and by some miracle, it's gotten even worse for Democrats. Look at this. Strong Trump counties they have a 63% increase in turnout. Weak Trump counties, 58%. Competitive counties, 36%. Weak Harris counties, 26 or 23%. Strong Harris counties, 26%. That's it. Trump counties, you know, areas that are more Trump-friendly, they're turning out at record rates. They are voting early. Not election day votes. These people are voting early. And outside of Fairfax, Democrats are seeing declines everywhere. Yeah, Fairfax is the only county Democrats have in Virginia that you could say is actually good. Everything else is a complete disaster. I really don't see how you could spin this as some kind of good news for Harris. It's not. And when you look at individual counties, it gets even worse for Democrats. Look at this. Southwestern Virginia, which is very Republican. It's like R plus 80. It's super Republican. They're going to vote for Trump no matter what. Look at turnout. Plus 204% in Buchanan. Craig, 230% increase. Scott, 192%. Smith, 456%. Yeah. And apparently, these trends have increased since Friday. Yeah. These numbers have gotten better since Friday. They're actually increasing for Republicans each day. Now, I'm not saying these counties have a lot of votes. They don't, especially compared to like Fairfax or Loudoun, where they have a lot of votes there. But the fact is, these are Trump voters voting early. These are not Democrats in Buchanan saying, you know what, we're going to vote early this time. There might be some of that. Okay, fine. A little bit here and there, but... Are you telling me that the entire increase in turnout is just Democrats when these are Trump areas? Bullshit. We have party registration in North Carolina and Pennsylvania, and they're finding the same trends. Republicans are voting early, way more than they did back in 2020 or even 2022. And for those that are saying, well, actually, Democrats are going to vote more on Election Day, that's, that's going to happen, yeah. Compared to 2020 and even 2022, yeah, Democrats will be more likely to vote on Election Day. The problem is, even NBC News is admitting that the majority of Harris voters are either voting early or absentee. Yeah, the majority of her voters, they're going to vote early. And if they're not voting now, you know what that means? They're not going to vote. Again, some will vote on election day. I'm not denying that. But we are seeing big shifts towards Republicans in early voting. That's a fact. And for those that are saying, oh, well, the, the Harris counties, they have much bigger populations. That's true, but 
they did the math on this and they realized, oh, wait a minute. There's no real difference between the turnout in Trump areas and the turnout in Harris areas. Like, of course, areas like Fairfax, Loudoun, Arlington, of course, they're going to have more votes, obviously. And that's what's what we're seeing right now. Democrats have higher turnout in their areas than Republicans do. The problem is just raw vote wise, it's not enough. And percentage wise, it's it's a disaster. Because Democrats rely way more on early votes than Republicans do. Republicans are going to vote on election day. They will. So if Republicans are running just a couple points behind, or even just like 10 to 15 points behind in early voting, especially if turnout for early voting is not the best, especially for Democrats, that's not good. And a quick reminder, this is happening in Virginia, not... Wyoming or some deep red state. This was a state that back in 2020 voted for Biden by over 10 points. Yet right now, turnout is looking like a complete disaster for Democrats. Now we still got to know who's actually voting because there's a possibility that, oh, these are just Democrats voting or they're high propensity voters. That means people that vote in every single election, and that's that. They vote every election. They're not low propensity voters, so they could lean more to the left. That's a possibility. But the fact is, we're seeing the biggest spikes in turnout in Trump areas, not in Biden areas, not in Democrat strongholds like Fairfax, outside of Fairfax, I should say. Outside of Fairfax, they have nothing. Fairfax is the only county where they're seeing good growth in. Loudon, they're not doing good whatsoever. I think even Prince William is a disaster for them. I mean, these are not good numbers for Democrats whatsoever. And the fact is, NBC is admitting that, yeah, the majority of Harris voters, they're going to vote early. And if early voting's this piss poor for them right now, which, by the way, it's getting worse with each passing day. Each passing day, it becomes even more Republican. Will that continue? Maybe not. But either way, you can't spin this as some kind of good news for Tr or Harris. You just can't. It is a disaster for her. It's good news for Trump because he's not getting killed at early voting. And the fact is, he is regaining the lead in Quinnipiac. Even CNN found the race tied. Now, will this continue? We don't know for sure. But the fact is, right now, the polling is starting to become way closer than it was even two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, it was, you know, Harris leads, but now it's becoming, oh, it's a tied race, Harris plus one, Trump plus one. And outside of Reuters, every poll released at the national level today has been a complete disaster for Harris. And for those that don't know, the Reuters poll is like Harris plus seven. We're not even bothering. Like, really, Harris plus seven. The day that CNN and Quinnipiac of old pollsters found the race 50-50. Yeah, release a Harris Plus 7 right now. What a joke. But what do you believe more? Quinnipiac, which has a history of overstating Democrat support, found the race Trump Plus 1. CNN that has a race tied, which just like Quinnipiac, overstates Democrats. The early voting looked like a disaster for Democrats. Or do you trust Reuters with their Harris Plus 7? I can't believe I'm saying this, but... I trust CNN, NBC, and freaking Quinnipiac much more than Reuters. Just for the simple fact that the data from Quinnipiac and CNN, they line up way more with what we're seeing in Virginia, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, even Georgia. It is not good for Democrats whatsoever, but maybe by some miracle, their early voting could get way better for them in a week. It can. Early voting's like that. It can be really good for them in two weeks. But at the same time, there's a chance that these numbers that we're seeing out of Virginia, they could get even worse for Democrats. Will that happen? We just got to see. But right now, these are not good numbers for Democrats whatsoever. And if this keeps up where, oh yeah, Quinnipiac and CNN, they're admitting that Trump's up in the national polling. Um, Harris is not going to win in that scenario. She cannot win the, the Electoral College if she's losing the popular vote. She can even win it by one to two, and that would not be enough. Anyways, folks, thank you so much for watching. If you guys did enjoy this video, smash the like button down below. Subscribe, share with your friends, hit that little bell. 
Follow the social media accounts in the description down below. And of course, join the channel today. Godspeed to all of you.